Hey guys, this is Zach Attack Reviews. I'm Zach. Welcome as I break down the good and the bad of Star Trek Picard Season 2. Little note about me. I was a big fan of Star Trek growing up. Everything my big brother watched, I end up getting into and it has influenced what I like now. Star Trek Deep Space Nine and New Generation were two shows that I absolutely loved. I kind of fell in and out of love with Star Trek over the years. It hasn't had that much content. The movies have come and gone. We haven't had that much shows. But with Paramount Plus now, there's been like this revival of Star Trek stuff. Discovery, Picard, and now they have new Strange Worlds coming out, which is like a prequel but like a little, it's like it's real different. It looks like it's really good as well. But I was really interested in watching Picard. I binged the first season early this year and absolutely loved it. All the references, the ragtag group of people Picard was putting together. So I'm ex excited to get into this season. Did it hold up to my expectations? Did it go into a season two slump? That's what I'm going to talk about today as I break it down for Star Trek Picard season two. <laughs> Season 2 of Picard starts off with Picard and the crew facing an anomaly in space when they're attacked by a Borg Queen, but suddenly they're thrusted into a separate timeline where the Federation has turned to the Confederation, where they hate aliens, they're all banned, and everybody's future and outcomes are different from how we normally know through the Star Trek timeline. So now that they're aware of this, they're trying to go find a way to the past so they can fix it when they realize that Q, a returning villain, antagonist, frenemy of the cards, is the reason why this is happening, but no one knows why. <laughs> I loved how fast paced and strong this season started. We got right into it. They showed like we had a little bit of time gap. Elnor was part of the Federation now. Some of these characters have grown a little bit, but it has it wasn't too far of a jump where it feels like they're completely different or much older. And then we really got into the action in these first two to three episodes. And a lot of information was coming fast, but I enjoyed it because sometimes these season twos or can just start off really slow and build to the end but it started really, really strong right from the beginning. We got the general issue, we got all the new characters, and we jumped right into the new timeline right away, which was really interesting. And then we went into the past, and it was like they were coming to our current timeline, which is, was pretty cool to see them interact with things how we live in now, because everything is usually just futuristic with Star Trek. And over the years of Star Trek timeline and history, Picard has been a character that's been withhold. He's very, he has a wall. He's kind of cold, even though he loves everyone and wants to save everyone. We didn't, we don't really get a lot about his past. And in this show, in this season, I really enjoyed that they they took the time. And this whole season was basically about discovering his past, why he does what he does, what happened with his family, and why he can't open up in love, and why he's so alone, and isolated when he's not out in space. And all the, the way they went about it, stringing through the central conflict that they were having with trying to get back to the, the future, their present, and fix it so it's not this weird Nazi federation that was going on. It was really interesting how it weaved in and out of that. We saw that character progression for him as we you know went down the season, how, how it ended. And then the second character that was really interesting that kept me going was Gerardi. In season one, I was very surprised that she lasted the entire season because a little bit of spoiler she murdered somebody in season one and right then and there i thought okay she's out of the show she's gonna be in jail or something bad's gonna happen but they kind of gave her a bit of a redemption arc but i just i i really thought that was a weird decision because of the things that she did and since she was such a new character but here they kind of found a way to redeem her in a way where she is tying herself to somebody that's bad but redeeming them as well and her arc of going from this person that doesn't really fit in is you know sh always throwing jokes out there to shy away from what she really feels and for feeling alone all the time so her trying to figure out this board queen who's trying to use the crew to assimilate the past so she has a 400 year start on doing that i thought that was really interesting it was a really fun dynamic that we got throughout the show and even though we didn't get a lot of growth from the rest of the supporting cast here they were all great and a lot of fun throughout the season especially Rhea 
Helios. He's my favorite new Star Trek character that was introduced in season one. He's a very interesting character that they use where he's kind of that, that typical character of like, I'm alone because of things that happened in my past. I'm slick and sly, get the ladies. But he has this heart and like sweetness to him that's a little different from that kind of ladies man trope. So it subverts the expectations a little bit and I really enjoy his character throughout the series. And Seven of the Nine and Rafi, they're building relationship as they start to get closer and closer and trying to get into a, a, a romantic relationship was interesting to watch. But those two characters, that's kind of what their character progression was. Seven and Nine, it was a little bit more of like accepting who she was and forgetting of the past, but it wasn't a central focus. It was very on the surface. And then Rafi as well, she had a very on the surface character progression. It was more about the relationship, but I really, really enjoyed but seeing them both in the group and together and they had a lot of funny moments and a lot of badass moments as well and a lot of episodes focused on them trying to solve this issue but one note i gotta say with rafi i don't know who the hairstylist for the show is but why her hair look like that i don't understand why i understood in the first season because she was out in the wilderness in like a sand dude by herself never leaving the area so okay your hair's gonna be messed up you don't got the products you don't got any hairstyles but now she's part of the federation she got money she had a job. What's going on with the hair? I, I can't believe it. I've never seen a black woman here look crazy like that on a show for so long. And the reason why I liked the first season so much is because it, the, the show was, you know, dealt with some darker feelings and subjects, but also has a lot of fun and mystery and wonder in the show. And that still is maintained here. The sci-fi aspect is great. The wonder is still here. And a lot of the different places they go and the different aspects they draw from, from Star Trek history, some, some surprise cameos from people from the lore of Star Trek happens here. We get some people from the old shows that made my heart warm because I, it was just great nostalgia, but they they do it in a way where it's not just like, hey, yeah, you remember this person? They actually meant something to the story, which I think some other properties don't do well. And I think that Star Trek has done that very, very well so far with the revival that's been going on Paramount Plus. <laughs> The team goes back in the past and we have some funny hijinks here and there and like a little bit of a storyline with like Border Patrol and Ice, but they don't do a lot with going back in the past that you think they could do. All the interactions that they should have, I think, have being so far in the future, being so advanced, being so together where a lot of the problems that we deal with don't happen anymore in their century. So I thought that there was a missed opportunity for them to have them have a little bit more of some hijinks going on some more interactions where they kind of you know talk about or show the differences and the things how far the society has come in the future and, and hopefully like show like maybe we can get there in real life it was really focused on the mission but there was certain episodes there in the middle because the season starts off really strong like i said those first two to three episodes but the middle there kind of slowed down and there was some interest there with the focus on picard's past and then the evolution of Roddy and the Boar Queen, but some of the other stuff, while the others were out in the world, we could have got some more interesting exploration there and then we just didn't get it. And I wish that they they did that. It, it, it hurt the season just a bit. And with that said, with a lot of it is focused on the mission, introducing new characters, the, the, there's so many antagonists, there's multiple antagonists, there's Q, right? And then there's the Boar Queen. And then there's the scientist who's also trying to do something and change the future for himself. It was a lot of antagonists going on at the same time time that we didn't get to flesh out the side characters like I said I feel like Rio's character was good but like Elnor was like pushed completely to the side it's nine and Rafi didn't really get a lot of personal character progression as well and it made some really awkward and rushed interactions toward the end of the season where it was like kind of like oh we gotta tie all these things up because now i'm hearing that in season three it's kind of like a refresh like it's, it's not going to be really continuing on from these story threads that we had so they kind of like racked up a bunch of the characters here which kind of made me feel a little short change and brought the season down a bit i absolutely love season one of star trek picard it felt like a, a breath of fresh air especially since i like a lot of sci-fi shows but a lot of them these days are dark have a deeper message 
have no humor in it, which is fine. I, I like those kind of shows, but it was nice to see a show that had a lot of humor that was light, that was hopeful. And a lot of those aspects are still here, but I think there was a storytelling quality drop in this season where it got came into a lull. Like they were trying to just buy the time until it got to the end. I think the, the season is still very, very enjoyable and it's very, very good. And if you enjoyed season one, you should definitely still watch this. And if you're a Star Trek fan, you should watch this. But if you're not, if you didn't really feel season one, and you, I don't think you're gonna really feel season two. But with that said, I'm gonna give it a C. What do you think of Star Trek Picard season two? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Drop all your thoughts down down below like subscribe hit the notification bell so you can be notified of more of my reviews reactions top 10 lists and discussions and you can watch more of my content right now